Have any of you ever heard of the Remagen Bridge? Mm -hmm. No, you will. Uh, there's a bridge called the Remagen Bridge across the Rhine River. The reason it's in the history books, it was seized intact. It was a railroad bridge, but they had planks across it, and uh, our American forces seized it. It was the uh, intact bridge. They thought all the bridges along the Rhine River were blown. But they seized the Remagen Bridge. And as you, if you do more research, you'll find in the history book a lot of mention of the Remagen Bridge. But you never hear any mention of the Ermitz Bridge. The Ermitz Bridge and the Remagen Bridge were twins. They were built, uh, uh, I, I think, between 1916 and uh, 1919 for World War I to make access to the Germans into France. And they were railroad bridges. They were long bridges, over 500 meters long. So if you read in the history books, you'll find that we found uh, that the Morgan Bridge had not been blown and American forces crossed from Morgan. But they, uh, nothing is mentioned about Ermin. So our job after the bulge was to uh, cross from Luxembourg into Germany and win two days through the Eiffel Mountains, the treacherous Eiffel Mountains, we got to the uh, Rhine River. And when I looked out on the Rhine River, there was the Ermitz Bridge still intact. And the Ermitz Bridge was supposed to have been blown. Aerial reconnaissance said there were intact bridges over the Rhine River, but there it was. We got there late in the afternoon. It's almost dark. And this is one of the greatest spectacles. And historians have missed this. The Germans knew we were coming. This is the only bridge. They're withdrawing. They're fighting to get across the bridge. There's a place called Ander Andernach here. There's a place called Koblenz here. These are large cities. And masses of German, this is tanks and trucks and horses, and all moving this way to, to cross the Ormitz Bridge. And they met here. It was like, uh, uh, musical chairs, six people, eight people fighting for one. And when I looked out and saw this, this is an unbelievable spectacle. You can't believe this. The Germans flooding out. So we immediately attacked. And but it was about two miles to the, from uh, the uh, or the uh, promontory we were. We came down onto the level ground. And there were no trees, no ridges, it was like a pool table. And we got onto it, and the minute we got onto it and headed for the river, the German 88s, which would, uh, uh, had been uh, protecting the bridge from the air, leveled, and they started shooting at us. It would have been murder for us to continue. So we had to pull back because it was almost dark. And all night long, uh, uh, as this uh, uh, mass of Germans kept withdrawing all night long, our artillery was hitting the bridge and hitting in all the locations on the bridge. And the next morning, we resumed our attack. As I mentioned, it was about two miles. We attacked and we're moving. Nothing hits us. There's no, no fire from any 88s. And we got to about a mile of the bridge. And the bridge, uh, I have a picture. It was, was 500 meters long, 500 yards, five football fields long, teeming with Germans, and up it went. In, uh, in, I, I was there, and there up it went, and there was a big arch, and the explosives must have been, uh, been, been immense because there were horses and men up here at a lower level trucks and a lower level tanks all dropped in the rain. Of course, we were shattered because we thought that this was our chance to seize an intact bridge across the river, but it was blown in front of us. And you never hear about Ermans. That's the reason I wrote about it, because the historians, for some reason or other, have written about the Remagen Bridge, but not about the bridge at Ermans.